Hello, I'm Stephen Cavallo. I'm an associate professor in the School of Meteorology. Um, I teach classes. Um, one is a graduate class called Fundamentals of Atmospheric Science. I've also taught synoptic meteorology. I teach uh, weather briefing and um, a severe storm adaptation class and also a polar meteorology class. I am originally from a suburb near Atlanta, Georgia. And I went to school and college. I went to Florida State University in Tallahassee. And then after that, I went to graduate school at the University of Washington in Seattle. And from there, I went on to be a postdoc at National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. And then in 2011, I arrived here um, in Oklahoma at the School of Meteorology. So my main research area, I guess my main research motivation is really to, to improve the predictability of, of weather. So and get beyond our, our about one week of forecast skill. And that traces back to features in the Arctic that I'll talk about coming up uh, in, a, in a minute or so. Um, and so my main areas, though, of research tools and studies that I do are vortex dynamics, um, synoptic and dynamic meteorology, polar meteorology, and data assimilation, and, as well as numerical weather prediction. So there are several areas of, of research um, pertaining to the Arctic that I'm, I'm working on right now. Um, um, this is all motivated by the fact that the Arctic has lower forecast skill than the northern hemisphere as a whole. And so there's features up in the Arctic that we haven't really studied a lot. And this comes down to um, things that we haven't studied the Arctic. We haven't studied Arctic dynamics very much in the past. And we have fewer observations in the Arctic. And also climate is changing really fast up there. And so three areas that I look at are some of the local things happening up in the Arctic. So like feedbacks with the atmosphere and sea ice and extreme Arctic cyclones. And one question I like to address is what the contribution of sea ice loss from Arctic cyclones. Another area of research are the remote impacts. So ultimately, we want to improve weather prediction down here. And so the origin of these cold air masses is up in the Arctic. And so I like to be able to understand more about where that air is originating from. And so those are remote impacts in the, the polar to lower latitude linkages. So for instance, what role do um, tropopause polar vortices have in creating jet streaks down here in the mid latitudes? And does that lead to severe weather, thunderstorms and nor'easters, for instance? Um, another focus area is since all of this requires um, a large domain, so I'm studying the Arctic and the mid-latitudes, and we need high resolution to be able to study all of this. I focus a lot on the tools for development, too. So, for instance, global modeling. Um, we're developing a global model in, in my research group, and also ensemble data assimilation so that we can get kind of a, a probability sense of, of what might be happening in the forecast. And so, for instance, we might be looking at what observations can help us to improve the numerical models so that maybe we can represent the, the atmosphere better. And so one of the, the features that I focus on a lot in my research are called tropopause polar vortices, or TPVs for short. Um, they're just a smaller scale feature within the broader polar vortex. So the polar vortex, everyone has probably heard about. It's, it's essentially. Um, the entire region north of the jet stream. But these TPVs are a little bit smaller, and so if you get a really strong cold air outbreak and record low temperatures, most likely that's associated with a TPV overhead coming out from directly from the Arctic. So one local area of research that I like to look at, so before they come out of the Arctic, I like to study how these TPVs can initiate surface cyclones to form up in the Arctic, and, and those are called ar Arctic cyclones. Um, but because of sea ice thinning over the most recent years, these cyclones can have an effect on sea ice, and so there's a lot of sea ice loss and a lot of unexplained sea ice loss, and so we study um, whether um, these Arctic cyclones are making a significant contribution um, to that sea ice loss. Another is to study how 
and when and where TPVs are moving out of the Arctic. And so it ends up that there are preferred regions that we're finding where these TPVs tend to move out of the Arctic, and especially is the case in the winter when we have cold air outbreaks. Um, we're also noticing that um, there is a correlation with when these TPVs move out of the Arctic and into the jet stream, it creates jet streaks, and those jet streaks are important for surface cyclones forming in the mid-latitudes. And so we're studying um, these pathways of TPVs out of the Arctic and what those impacts are down here. Um, so it's not just winter weather, so it could be snowstorms, it could be any kind of um, winter cyclone. Um, but also in the spring, we think that might be important for severe thunderstorms. Um, so for instance, there's cases now that we've been studying where a TPV moves out of the Arctic and if it moves into the Four Corners region and creates a jet streak over there, that might put um, the Central Plains or the Southern Great Plains in a favorable region for rising motion or you know, tornadoes or severe weather. And so we've had cases of tornado outbreaks that, that we can attribute to at least the presence of a TPV. And this has never been studied before. And so and this is another area of research um, that we've been looking at recently. And so ultimately it comes back to if TPVs and the jet streaks are important, I want to go back as far as possible to understand how these TPVs are evolving. And we don't really have a good understanding of that. We don't understand what's making those TPVs as strong as they are or move the way that they're doing before they get here. And so in order to do that, we focus on global modeling, high resolution modeling, because we need that large domain. We need to be able to predict their movement all the way out from the Arctic into here in the mid latitudes, or sometimes all the way across an ocean. Um, we also need observations of them. So they're coming out of an area that has fewer observations. Not a lot of people live in the Arctic like they do here in the continental United States. So there's a lot less, a lot fewer weather stations. And especially at the tropopause level, we don't really have a lot of data to tell us what these TPVs look like. And so we're having, we're gonna be having a field campaign coming up as part of the year of polar prediction in um, summer of 2020. And so our research group is actually going to be going up into the Arctic and um, flying aircraft through these vortices in the Arctic and some of these Arctic cyclones, especially that we think the ones that might be associated with sea ice loss. We're gonna have hopefully two aircraft flying through dissecting apart these TPVs in the Arctic before an event happens. We're also gonna um, link with a, an icebreaker from the Germans called the Polar Stern that's gonna be locked in the ice for that year as part of your of polar prediction. And so that's gonna be a really exciting field campaign for us to be able to get those extra observations of these, these small t TPVs and Arctic cyclones that might help us be able to understand that. And so we're looking forward to that that's coming up summer 2020. We haven't figured out for sure what bases, but it's probably gonna be um, somewhere in Norway. Svalbard is an island actually, it's part of Norway, but pretty far north around 80 degrees latitude. So um, and another place could be northern Canada or also northern Greenland. So um, we'll be up there for six weeks coming up in 2020, which isn't that far away, studying um, TPV. So it'll be fun flying into um, the center of these storms up there. And um, hopefully um, we'll need, we'll, we'll definitely need some good students to, to help us out with this project coming up because that's only a couple years away now.